The Book of Eli, a 2010 action film, featured Denzel Washington as a blind warrior safeguarding the Bible in a post-apocalyptic world. Despite its success, earning $157 million at the box office, the movie's ending posed a challenge for continuing the franchise. Typically, such success would prompt studios to consider sequels, but Washington's character was killed off, complicating matters. This left options like following Mila Kunis's character, Solara, in a sequel or exploring the world through a prequel. The new prequel show for The Book of Eli breaks two major career trends for Denzel Washington, who usually avoids sequels and franchise commitments and also typically avoids television roles, making this project a unique departure for him. After 14 years since its movie release, The Book of Eli is set to expand as a franchise with a prequel TV show. The series is being developed by Gary Whitta, the writer of the original movie, and will be directed by Albert and Alan Hughes. Notably, John Boyega will be taking on the lead role of Eli in the prequel, marking Denzel Washington's absence from reprising his character after all this time. The Book of Eli prequel show is breaking a significant career trend for Denzel Washington related to its setting. It marks the first time a prequel is being made for a movie starring Denzel. Throughout his career, Washington's films have rarely spawned franchises or extensions. Despite occasional discussions about prequel projects like one for Safe House, none of them materialized. Another reported prequel titled Training Day, Day of the Riot also seems unlikely to happen. Therefore, the Book of Eli prequel show stands out as the first of its kind, expanding a franchise that Washington led, thus breaking a long-standing trend in his movie career. While Denzel Washington's movies generally haven't spawned sequels or remakes, there have been some exceptions. Training Day evolved into a franchise with a sequel TV series, although Washington didn't reprise his role in it. The Equalizer franchise is unique in producing sequel movies with Washington as the lead. Additionally, Washington's films are not usually remade, but he has been part of a few remakes, like the taking of Pelham 123 and The Magnificent Seven. These instances show that while Washington's films may not frequently lead to sequels or remakes, there have been notable exception in his career. In a significant departure, the Book of Eli prequel show is breaking new ground by recasting Washington's iconic role. John Boyega, known for his role in the Star Wars trilogy, will step into the lead role of Eli to explore his character's life 30 years prior. This move is unprecedented, as it marks the first time a franchise has recast a character originally played by Denzel Washington. What makes this particularly noteworthy is that the prequel show is directly connected to the established canon of Washington's movie, setting it apart from other attempts to recast his roles in unrelated projects. John Boyega faces added pressure in portraying the lead role in the Book of Eli prequel show. Taking over from Denzel is already a daunting task, given Washington's established performance in the 2010 movie. However, being the first actor to play a character previously portrayed by Washington adds an extra layer of scrutiny. Viewers are likely to compare Boyega's performance and mannerisms with Washington's portrayal, especially since the prequel inherently invites such comparisons. On the other hand, while the upcoming Book of Eli prequel TV series is exciting, there are plenty of important questions it should answer that the movie left ambiguous. How did Claudia become Carnegie's mistress? In The Book of Eli, Gary Oldman's character, Bill Carnegie, serves as the primary antagonist who rules with fear. However, he exhibits a softer side towards Claudia, a blind woman he keeps as a mistress to help translate texts. The movie hints at a long-standing relationship between them before the events of the film. The prequel TV series can delve deeper into their relationship, providing more context and backstory, thus expanding on the dynamics between Bill Carnegie and Claudia. This exploration can offer a richer understanding of their connection and motivations. What happened to the rest of the world? The movie doesn't explicitly state the fate of the rest of the world beyond the setting where the story takes place. It suggested that much of the world faced destruction, leaving what remains of America as one of the few surviving nations. 
However, the possibility exists that other parts of the world may have struck deals to avoid conflict and focus on rebuilding. Although this second theory is less probable, the prequel series can offer a more definitive and compelling explanation about the fate of the rest of the world. This would provide a clearer understanding of the broader post-apocalyptic context in which the story unfolds. How did Carnegie and Redridge meet? Ray Stevenson portrays Redridge in the movie, a character who accompanies Carnegie throughout the film. Redridge is depicted as an imposing and strategic figure, contrasting Carnegie's more boisterous demeanor. This dynamic sets the stage for exploring how these two opposing forces of nature bonded and assumed a co-ruling position in the desolate United States. In particular, Redridge's actions during a shootout with Eli demonstrate his resolute and calculated approach on the battlefield. Additionally, his decision not to shoot Solara, played by Mila Kunis, despite having the opportunity, suggests the possible development of an honor code or affiliation with a pre-apocalyptic organization like the police force or military. How did Eli learn how to survive in the post-apocalypse? The key question that the prequel series must address is how Eli acquired the skills and abilities necessary to survive and thrive in the post-apocalyptic world. Unlike in the movie, where Eli's mysteriousness and stoic nature added to his enigmatic character, the TV series needs to delve into the origins of his capabilities, including proficiency with firearms, melee weapons, tracking skills, and more. One possible explanation is that Eli had a mentor or teacher in his youth who imparted these survival skills to him. Alternatively, the series could explore the idea that Eli developed his abilities through self-reliance and adaptation in the harsh post-apocalyptic environment. By answering this question, the prequel series can provide a deeper understanding of Eli's character and backstory, showcasing the journey that transformed him into the formidable and skilled survivor depicted in the Book of Eli. This exploration adds layers to the character and enriches the overall narrative of the franchise. What caused the apocalypse? One of the primary questions that audiences will be eager to see addressed in the Book of Eli prequel series is the cause of the United States' destruction through the nuclear holocaust. Given the current global concerns surrounding nuclear weapons and the potential for World War III, the prequel is likely to heavily focus on this aspect of world building to establish the stakes and backdrop of the story. While the Book of Eli hints at a scenario where the world's superpowers turned against each other, the prequel series can delve deeper into this narrative, providing a compelling drama leading up to the apocalypse. By exploring the events and decisions that ultimately led to the downfall of civilization and the rise of a post-apocalyptic landscape, the show can offer a more comprehensive understanding of the world in which the characters exist. Despite fans' desire for a sequel to The Book of Eli following the release of the movie in 2010, it appears unlikely that a sequel will materialize. The movie's ending was not only emotionally impactful, but also served the thematic elements of the story effectively. It concluded the narrative in a conclusive and satisfying manner, leaving little room for a direct continuation without potentially undermining the story's integrity. The conclusive nature of the ending contributed to the movie's impact and resonance with audiences, and attempting to create a sequel could risk diluting or undoing the carefully crafted themes and messages of the original film. Therefore, while there may be interest from fans in seeing more of the story unfold, the evidence and thematic considerations suggest that the Book of Eli 2 may never come to fruition. And there you have it. Are you excited to dive deeper into the backstory of Eli and the intriguing characters from the movie? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe for future updates. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.